And welcome back to the 20 strongest Captain Clash Shinigami list. And coming in the 14th spot is Shuhei Isage. Now, when I did started this um, you know series, I had to define, and occasionally I still have to redefine, uh, or just for people who aren't uh, familiar, like, why is he this lot high? What exactly I qualified as a Captain Clash Shinigami? A, it had to have been someone who had achieved their Bankai, or at the very minimum was already a captain. Like, Kenpachi, if he never learned his Bankai, would have still qualified because he was already a captain. Uh, but it has to be someone who achieved their Bankai, um, was already a captain. We had to have seen or know the ability of their Zanpakuto. So, this is why Ukitaka doesn't go on the list, because we never saw his Bankai, or we don't even know what his Bankai does. We can only speculate. But if in some other supplementary material, like, for instance, the Can't Fear Your Own World novels, uh, if they revealed, say, you know, Shinji and Shuhei's Bankai, then they got included on the list. Uh, also, obviously, they had to be strong to even qualify to be a captain. So if, the, you know, like, if some of the captains were gone, like they were by the end of the Thousand Year Blood War, uh, a, they could be recommended for captain. Like, for instance, Shuhei could have been recommended for captain, hypothetically. Ikaku could theoretically be uh, recommended for a captain. Uh, and we know Rukia got, ultimately took the 13th spot, uh, 13th division spots. But anyway, Shuei Isagi, to me, when I broke it down, and remember, I'm basically putting them up against, up against every one of them and then tallying the wins, and that's how I order them. Uh, Shuei is an interesting case. Now, Shuei didn't win any more bouts than Tozen did. But the bigger he, he beat a couple of individuals that Tozen, I don't believe, did, and he beat Tozen. So, I mean, we'll go over all of it. First and foremost, Ikaku, I'm not, I'm just going to get out of the way. Remember, when I did Ikaku as the first um, Shinigami of the series, he lost He lost to everyone but Tosin. So, there's no, I don't bring to, uh, Ikaku up at this point because there's just no point in bringing it up. Uh, anyway, so, but that being said, let's talk about what does um, Shuhei Hisagi actually bring to the table as a, as a fighter. Because he actually, he's a very, he's quite a competent fighter in his own right. He honestly, his biggest problems are his own personality. Uh, Shuhei, uh, sorry, I just want to, uh, oh, kitty, jeez. Uh, your claws, man, your claws, your claws. Yeah, oh, uh, he, and now you're, now you're just bopping these around. God, you're so, sorry, you don't see me at the moment, but yeah, he, the cat's just being so needy, but it's okay. I can pet and I can multitask. It's fine. Uh, I digress. So uh, he's actually was a lot to the table that if he were a mm, ruthless, it isn't the right word. If he was a more confident individual, he would really be a dangerous, uh, like a he would really like stand out as a fighter but because of what because of his own personality remember the sword is a reflection of you surprisingly he is um he is limited by his own his own moral standard his own viewpoints which he are a bit of a holdover from uh Kaname's days for Kaname teaching him uh but he is a master swordsman to the point where he, because he was so reluctant to use his Shikai, he trained to become extremely proficient with his own Zanpakuto, just as a sword master. But, that being said, he's also a, oh god, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Kira Kusarigami Jutsu Master. Basically, because of the what his blade Zanpakuto actually is, he's, he's adept at fighting with that. He's also, surprisingly, a Kiyo expert using a level 62 binding spell. That's not, that's, um... Um, that, that's not a small feat. That's, that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, he was able to use these in conjunction and releases on to deliver more damage when he used the 11, uh, number 11 Hado to channel electricity through his Zanpakuto. Uh, so yeah, he's actually quite experienced with Keto. Though we, we very, we don't see him use a lot of Keto. It's clear. He, he can use some Keto's, but like, I wouldn't be shocked if he could use some level 70 Keto's at this point. Uh, especially like the Hados and stuff, and using in conjunction with his um, Zanpak Toe, I, not impossible. He's a Shunpo expert. He is actually very skilled in non-armed combat when he has to be. Uh, he busts high enough uh, spiritual pressure to be a lieutenant and probably even be a captain if you really want to. He obviously got enhanced endurance, strength, and durability to some degree. Now, obviously, one of the big things we want to talk about is his Zanpak Toe, Kazushini, which you can just see. I don't even have to have a secondary a thumbnail for him. I just, he was using the thumbnail I was using. Uh, or, or secondary image. 
Kazushini uh, basically takes the form of these uh, of these Kurosagama like weapons, basically like these two twin scythe blades, which are inverted, and it can be and they're it's very dangerous in the sense that uh, it's unpredictable in combat. It can go whichever way, uh, and is extremely sharp. Like Shue comments, like it looks like it was meant for reaping lives, and it does. I mean, it's a it's a very gnarly looking weapon. It, it, it's a very de it, like it looks like it, he's not wrong. It looks like it's designed for taking law. It looks like a, looks like something a reaper would use. But its actual ability is quite interesting. As Shuei's Zanpakuto's actual ability is, um, oh, is there actual artwork? Oh man, I could have. Ah, oh, crap! I could have actually. If this is from Brave Souls, I could have used this one instead. Oh well, because I got a picture for his Bonkai, which was drawn by uh, Kubo himself. But now I, now I found there's a Brave Souls artwork of it. I'm like, oh, this is even better. Damn. Oh, well. Uh, eh, hindsight's 2020. But it's revealed in the Camp Hero and World novel that his actual, his Bankai's actual ability, uh, his Shikai's actual ability is, because it represents the full circle of life and death. It's not just for taking life, it's for restoring life. See, the Zonpak toe itself, the handle isn't what you see him holding onto in this picture. The handle is the chain. And as long as he's got a hold of the chain and can has the energy to, re, uh, to heal himself, the Zonpak toe, Kajshini, will heal any wound he takes. I haven't, We haven't gotten to this point in the uh, Camp for Your Own World uh, novels in terms of the American uh, edition of it. But he gets bifurcated at one point. He gets cut straight down the middle and he heals from it. That's how actually impressive his sword is. Again, he still he needs the Ryatsu to do it. If he runs out of Ryatsu, then he's screwed. So I mean, it's if hypothetically a Kempachi had this type of uh, Zanpakuto, there would be no end the end to Kempachi. <laughs> uh, but no, the, he has a Zanpakuto. Now his Bonkai is known as one second name name name. Uh, is known as Fushino Kojo, or Fulris, Fulris Undying Hangman's Noose, where he rains countless chains down from the sky, inflicting immense damage and weakening nearby opponents, additionally to be... Well, that's in the game. But anyway, it's... Um, it is Fuji... The full name is Fushino Kojo. Again, uh, Undying Hangman's Noose. In this... In the Bankai, a large dome, as you can see in, up in the top corner, uh, or atop of the picture, a large dome of chains... Uh, appears and just encircles and entraps the opponent and binds the opponent and you together. It combines your Ryatsu and spiritual pressure together. Any injury either of you take will be instantly healed from that collective pool of Ryatsu. And it will not, uh, you will not basically be able to uh, get out of it unless you have an ability that allows you to do it or Shuhei, uh, Shuhei deactivates the Bankai until both of you run out of Ryatsu. Because you'll both be pretty much instantaneously healing. Now, there are limitations to this. Shuei, ha Shuei still feels pain. He's not immune to pain at all. So he's going to have... He, 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 there's a limit to how much pain he can take. And if he reaches that limit, he will have to deactivate the bond guy because he might just pass out from pain. The pain itself might kill him. Uh, also, against someone who has unique abilities that could counter something like this... Say, um, and we'll get to uh, characters who would have abilities like this. Uh, say, like, um, like a Shunsui, a Shunsui, for instance, would be a very likely candidate just because of the uniqueness of his sword. Or a, um, I'm trying to think about Ichibe, maybe. That, that would be a problem for him as well. But still, it's a very unique, very cool Bankai. I, like, I liked his Bankai when I found out about it. So, with that being said, almost 10 minutes in, let's get down to this. Now, fortunately, you'll be able to go through some of these pretty quick. So, right off the bat, against both the, you know, two, two some of the two heaviest hitters, Yama and Ichibe, he doesn't fare well. The problem with uh, Kazushini's regeneration abilities, I don't think it works on, like, a mass effect, a mass damage effect type of attack, like incineration by flames, for example. Honestly, Yamamoto could basically just incinerate Kazushine itself with his Bankai alone. Uh, just activating the Bankai. In fact, if it was Bankai to Bankai, Shuei has no chance against Yamamoto at all. Because if, if he traps Yamamoto in the dome and the Yamamoto uses his Bankai, he's going to immediately incinerate the Bankai along with Shuei. <laughs> so yeah, he, he can't he can't stand up to Yamamoto at all. Ichibe is a bit more unique. Um, 
he could at least go toe-to-toe -to -toe for a little bit with him. Definitely. But as soon as uh, it, Kazuchino loses half its name, it's done. And even if you go into Bankai, again, Iji Manji is a perfect counter to something like that because it can just take the power away from... Uh, again, I want to have the name up here so I can uh, reference it. It can take the power away from uh, Fujino Kojio. Uh, Kojio. Yeah. Kojio. Because it's K-O-J-Y-O. -O. Uh, so, Yo ko Kojio. Kojio. Uh, yeah, so Fujino Kojo. Uh, you can just take the power away from that. Um, so, yeah, against those two guys, yeah, he just doesn't fare well. Against Soyphone, it's definitely a more even match against Soyphone, definitely. Soyphone is obviously a close range fighter by nature. Hazan Pakto illustrates that. Uh, she's definitely the better fighter and probably the faster of the two, but his sword is unpredictable. His sword is very unpredictable, uh, especially the way he uses it because he's a master at using it. So, I wouldn't say it's impossible for him to uh, fight on even ground with her Shikai to Shikai. Bankai to Bankai is interesting because his Bankai, again, would probably counter most of the damage her Bankai would do. The problem I'm seeing here in a fight with these guys, though, actually stems from the fact that her Shikai does damage that he can't heal from. It's, an in it's a two-step kill, instantaneous kill. I'm sorry, Pumpkin's here, he's rubbing against me, and I'm rubbing back, and you're, oh, you're a good boy. Anyway, luckily you can't see me, <laughs> so it's all good. Uh, just got to hear. Can you hear the purring in the background? I bet you can. I'm just, actually, I'm going to be quiet for just a second. I want to see if it comes up. Nope, I can't. Nope, it's not coming up according to the sound. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that's actually the big thing. The fact that she outspeeds him, out outfights him in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat, um... It's, it, it kind of just, unfortunately, illustrates the point that she would be able to get the two-step killing long before he'd find any way to really beat her effectively. Uh, yeah, yeah, pumpkin. Yeah. Now, against the two third sea, uh, third sea captains, this is where things started to get interesting when I kind of was breaking it down. Against Rose, I will say that I don't think he stands a very good chance. Against Shikai to Shikai, again, different story Shikai to Shikai. It is, it's, it is different because... Uh, honestly, Rose's whip is great and all, and it can it could keep um, Kazuchina at bay, but Kazuchina can actually wrap around a punch just like a whip can because of the chain. So they, I think, would actually be pretty tied at Shikai to Shikai. Add on the fact that, you know, I'm sure Rose probably does know Keto given this type of Zanpakuto he has, but we just never see him use it, so I can't say he does actually know Keto, or at least he, he's ever used it. But we know that uh, Shuhei does know Kido, so that could pose a problem to him. The problem against Rose was his Bankai. Is that the type of damage he, uh, the Bankai does is kind of an illusionary damage. It's it's tricking the, your senses into thinking you're being hurt. And I don't think Kazushini's healing abilities would really work in that regard. Uh, nor would uh, Fujino Kojo's. Uh, Fujino Kojo's. So uh, I had to give the win for Rose on that one. With Gein, though, was actually really interesting. Because, again, Shikai to Shikai, they're actually pretty tied. One's more unpredictable than the other. One's very straightforward with Shinso. But, again, Gein's very tricky. Sword, sword to sword, they're probably pretty equal in terms of their skill as swordsmen. So, they, I, didn't, uh, I didn't see that uh, being a huge... Uh, I, I didn't give any huge advantages to either of them, unfortunately, in that regard. Um, but when it came down, and I'm, they both, again, they both, we've seen that they both know Keto, so I, I, but given what we've seen them both demonstrate, seems to be roughly on par with each other. What really came interesting to me was Bankai to Bankai. Kamishini no Yari actually isn't a very good Zanpakuto against Shuhei, because, yeah, you'll cut him, but he'll just constantly heal. Even if he were to put the sliver of poison in there... Because it's breaking down your cells and all that, and you're basically he, and you're base, your body's breaking apart, like we saw with Eisen. It started to break down and just you know, dis, like disintegrate. But I think, but the healing properties of the Bankai, I think, offset that. I mean, eventually, Gein probably would win that. But the, if you really break it down to uh, technically, it's one of those things where. I think Shuhei actually has the edge over Gein in a, in a fair fight, like where neither of them know each other's abilities, like completely neutral. I think actually Gein 
actually would lose that fight because the Bankai would just counteract that effect. And not, not, not to mention, even if it was constantly, um, um, uh, you know, uh, constantly uh, breaking away his cells, he'd constantly be healing, which offsets that. Uh, and at that point, when you get close to the end of the Bankai, they're both going to be almost completely out of Riazzo. So at that point, then, uh, I imagine Shuhei, smart enough to understand that he probably wouldn't survive that, would come, uh, would quickly deactivate the Bankai, go back to Nishikai, and then just do, uh, or stab him with the Shik uh, with his blaze in the Shikai. Gein would probably say, is that really all you? And then he's just cuffs up, let's, what? And he's like, I deactivated the Bankai before, before it, uh, before it, uh, <laughs> sorry. And you could start, you know, struggling. I deactivated the Bankai right at the time of, uh, right at the time I sliced, uh, stabbed you. Uh, if I'm, go if I'm going, I'm taking you down with me, Ichimaru. And then just, you know, rips them apart. So I actually think because of the weird nature of, uh, Fujino Kojo, uh, Kojoi, uh, Kojo, Kojo, that, yeah, I think Shuhei could, act would actually win. That, that is, a, it's a weird scenario to be sure, but I do think he'd actually win. Uh, then we get into Unahana. Unahana was another weird one. Um, and the reason that Unahana is an, oh, another weird one is the fact that, again, Shikai to Shikai, I mean, Minazuki is a very weird Zanbok Uh I, I don't believe it's designed for combat, but it could be theoretically is. Just, but again, him, Shue is a fighter in Shikai versus just, yeah, yeah Unahana as as just, you know, a melee fighter. She's one of the most skilled swordsmen in the Soul Society, one of the strongest captains, period. Um, oldest captains as well. It, it wouldn't matter. Ona could easily handle him. I mean, yeah, I take the trickiness of Kazushini out of the equation. She's had so much experience fighting that she, I doubt she'd have much trouble handling him. Bankai to Bankai, though, is really weird. Because, obviously, her Kaido is on the, as a, at the level where she can instantaneously heal wounds. Um... And, yeah, it, it, it's kind of like it offsets his abilities. And then if you go into a Bankai, which seems to deal with acid, uh, the acidic nature things, she uh, she would uh, be melting him down and he might it would be healing, but she'd probably be healing herself. And it's very weird. Ultimately, I do think she would win the fight. I think she would just outlast him because she's just overly more experienced and just more tenacious and psychotic than he is. So I do think Onahana would win over him, but it's a really weird matchup because they both involve actual healing abilities to some degree. Uh, and then, you know, non-healing abilities. So yeah, it's, it's a little difficult to figure that out against Shinji. Yeah. I couldn't give him a win against Shinji. Um, Shinji's second, unfortunately Shinji's Bankai will eventually talk about Shinji who, not going to say when, but he is coming up soon um, uh, on the list. He's, uh, it's a little spoiler, he's not within the top 10. His Bankai can't be used on a one-on-one -on -one fight, so it's his Shikai versus Kazushini Shikai and, you know, the Bankai Fushi no Kojo. Uh, it's, oh my god, you're silly. <laughs> the cat is literally just making, he's making biscuits in my shoe. <laughs> you're so seedy. Um... So, it, it was very odd in that regard how I would place this. Obviously, Shinji no, does know Kido. He's actually pretty well versed in Kido as far as we can tell. And he's obviously has a hollow mask and can use Saros if he wants to. Sakanade versus Kazushini. Kazushini is unpredictable, but if, if Shuei doesn't even know the location of where he's throwing his blades, it's not really going to matter. And Bankai to Shikai, it's still the same problem, because if he can't figure out where his opponent is, his Bankai doesn't mean squat. So Shinji Shinji definitely took the advantage in that fight. It was definitely Shinji. Against Renji, um, now if you've seen, if you've uh, watched my video on uh, my lieutenant's ranking video, you'll know that Renji is pretty high up there. But, a little spoiler, I actually felt that Shuhei was stronger than Shinji. So, uh, Shinji, <laughs> stronger than Renji. Renji, Shinji, you can see where I actually make that mistake. Uh, so I actually put him above Renji in that regard. Now, in hindsight, do I feel I was wrong? Does Renji actually beat um, Shuhei in an actual fight? Well, seeing as you know, I've already done the Renji video. You should probably know where my stance is on that. And the answer is no. I do think that, as first off, as an actual swordsman, I think that 
um, Shuhei is just stronger overall simply because he worked hard to mitigate the use of his Shikai because he didn't like his Shikai. So he already became an expert swordsman without the use of his Shikai most of the time. Uh, I'm not to say that uh, Renji isn't an expert swordsman as well, but it's clear that he's a bit more of a primal fighter and relies a lot more on his Shikai than his base form sword. Whereas Shuhei was the opposite. He relied more on his base form sword than his Shikai. But he also is a master at using his Shikai as well, which puts him on a... On a already gives an advantage in a fight against Renji. Uh, yes, Renji's whip blade could block uh, Kazushime to some degree, but it's not going to matter because the blade doesn't have any ability that couldn't be healed in terms of an attack by Kazushini. And then Bankai the Bankai, it's the same problem. As that the only um Zaka Tempo, I think, is the only um attack that Renji has in Bankai that might be able to do something to Renji, and that's only if the Bankai isn't activated. It's very likely that what would happen was he'd heal from the incineration, more than likely. And it's not like Yamamoto whose Bankai could literally incinerate the Bankai itself. <clears throat> itself. It is the fact that he would just be attacking Shuhei and it would just be healing. It would just be Renji continually beating this wall that will not break. So Renji, and again, I think Shuhei just comes off as the more strategic individual. Plus, again, we know he's much more versed in Keto, far more versed in Keto than someone like Renji is. So uh, we know for a fact that he could probably just, you know, hit him with a uh, Hato 60, or Bakudo 62. Assuming he doesn't even know higher ones at this point, which he probably does. And you probably just end the fight there. So, yeah, against Renji, I had to give him the win. Against Byakia, he flat out lost. Um, it's just a matter of Byakia is, again, too powerful. He's he, he's, he's not a jack of all trades. He's almost a master of all trades. He's a keto master, shunpa master, sword master. The only thing we don't really see him in is hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that's probably not because he doesn't know hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's just that he doesn't need it. Um, he could easily just uh, use Hato to bind him up. He could easily counter Kazushina with his own Zanpak toe. The only thing that's going to, you know, be a factor is Kazushina's regeneration capability. And quite frankly, it's it's one of those things where Badakia can pretty much just overwhelm it. Bankai to Bankai, it's the kind of the same thing where eventually I think he's just going to get out of the Bankai and outlast Shuhei. So, uh, now granted, when the Bankai ends, if, it, if it's been used right, it is going to tire out both opponents or both uh both combatants but that's not to say that um he's um he's still going to he, they're not going to be able to maybe fight past that uh, it, it's more more than likely that Byaki will still be able to stand uh after the fact rather than Shuhei so yeah against uh Byaki I know he flat out lost against Sajin he won uh, uh he he beat Sajin in a fight now, why did he beat Sajin in fight? Well, I explained it a bit in my uh, Sajin video. Uh, but, uh, well, actually, wait. Did he beat uh, Sajin in a fight? Where is he? Yes, yeah, sir. I was looking at a different one. He beat Sajin in a fight. So, the reason he beat Sajin in a fight is actually kind of interesting. Uh, the thing about it is, he... Because Sajin Zanpakuto is, is so connected to him, any damage that's being taken is... It doesn't matter. It... it, it it's going to be um, reflected on Komamura himself, and any damage Komamura takes is going to be reflected on the giant. And the Shikai alone is very dangerous for that. Uh, in I think words here, the Shikai alone poses a problem to the to the giant. Not that it would do a lot of damage per se, but it would still be able to cut up the giant and cut up Komamura too. And the fact that he has two different blades that he can, that are both very unpredictable, kind of adds on to that as well. He could probably attack the giant, you give it a little nick, which Komar's like, whatever, but then Komar just suddenly gets a blade right through the shoulder, and the giant suddenly is feeling that. And then it changes. Now, now things change up a bit. So, just Shikai to Bankai, as long as Shikai can avoid the giant, or even use, say, like, uh, Bakano, Bakano 62 or higher to keep Komar from moving for a little bit, he, I think he could pull out one, and then you go Bankai to Bankai, it's the same problem that Komamura is nothing more than a giant the thing of power. It's not going to matter what he does to Shuhei. It's just going to be a matter of can he outlast in terms of the pain. And 
I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think Komomura... I mean, Komomura probably could outlast in terms of the pain, but that doesn't mean he would ultimately outlast Shuhei for other reasons as well, because Shuhei would also be dishing out damage while he's... Um, while they're while they're while Komomura is also dishing out damage. Also, if um, to, uh, Kokujo Tenken Yo is able to go through the Bonkai is a question, probably. But the Bonkai Changer is just going to heal up again, so it's just going to be a matter of who's going to outlast him. And I think actually Shuhei Shuhei I think is just going to have a better advantage than Shikai, and he's even is in Bonkai. He's just going to I think skate around Sajin. And <clears throat> and ultimately be able to wear him down and bind him up to the point where he'll actually be able to do the serious damage he needs to do to beat him. Uh, and like I said, I got the kitty here. He's panicking. He's all rubbing and loving. Uh, so then we go up against Shunsui. And yeah, there's not really a clear way that he can beat Shunsui. Shikai to Shikai, he'll be able to survive a lot of what Shunsui can do to him for a while. But ultimately, it's not going to matter that much. Uh, he's so, sorry, Pumpkin is just such a love bug. Um, he's going to be up. Yeah, he's going to be able to survive a lot of what Shinsui does to him, but he's not going to uh, uh, be able to really dish out. Shinsui is way too crafty for him to for him to be taken advantage of like that. Then Bankai to Bankai. This is because of how odd Shinsui's Bankai. Shinsui, yeah, Shinsui's Bankai is. I don't think Fuji no uh, Fuji no Kojo. It was really going to be a good Bankai. It's a unique Bankai to be sure. But here's the thing, any damage that gets done is going to be reflected on the uh, opponent um, in the first dawn of his Bankai. But the first, uh, but um, Shuei's Bankai completely offsets that. So then you go into the second one where it's the, um, um, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, again, the cat is, yes, you're being very loving right now. I'm, I'm focusing on things right now. Um. So, <clears throat> think words here. Damn it. <laughs> so the second don where it's the where it's the disease. I don't think that one can be healed from. Then you deal with the then you deal with the don guy abyss, which basically it's you know you drown or run out of riatsu, which kind of ties into Fuji no Kojo's uh, bankai. And then you get the razor wire effect, which that wouldn't be a very good technique against it. But frankly, it's more the. <clears throat> More the uh, the first three that would be the bigger problem. So ultimately, I do think Shuhei is gonna uh, Shunsui is gonna win that fight. I do. Uh, then we move on to the ninth captains of the uh, the, the division. Now against Kensei, <clears throat> jeez, sorry, I got a little bleh, stuff in my throat. So against Kensei, no, I don't think um, I don't think Shuhei wins against Kensei. And the reason I don't think that is strictly on the grounds of it's it's clear uh, Kensei has a lot more uh, is he's still his captain and I think there's a reason he's still his captain that he just isn't strong enough to take on someone like Kensei. Kensei is much more of a hand to hand guy. He's much more brutal in a fight. He's his bankai it just wreaks havoc a lot more than say. Um, uh, Shuei's is, and let's remember, it's about pain. Uh, pain is the big key thing here that could shut off Shuei's Bankai if he can't handle the pain. And Bankai to Bankai, while he's not going to be able to do any real damage to Shuei, his Bankai, Tenken Tachikaze, as long as he's in contact with the opponent, the explosions keep happening continuously, condensed down into fists, uh, or brass knuckles, or whatever. He's, he's going to be dishing out a lot of pain. So, yeah, uh, I, Kensei, I think, would actually be winning that fight. Tozen, we actually went over in the last video. I actually don't believe he can be, uh, he can actually beat a subordinate. Um, I truly think that, um, that Shuhei surpassed, uh, Tozen in terms of a fighter. And just due to the fact that the unpredict unpredictability of his own Zanbakta, the fact that it heals his, uh, heals his wounds, which means, Tozen is not going to be able to actually deliver a killing blow because there is no killing blow here in this case. And his Zanpakuto, for all its Keto abilities, is actually more of a melee type when you actually uh, look at how he uses his Zanpakuto. Yes, he has been. A, yes, he has um, Suzumushi Nishiki, which is a Keto esque ability. But we've already established that 
more than likely it deals with uh, Riazzo versus Riazzo, spiritual pressure versus spiritual pressure. And it's very likely that it's not going to be able to drop someone of, you know, in perfect condition of considerable uh, spiritual power. Like, uh, for instance, he didn't use it against Kempachi, probably because he knew it wouldn't work. Benahiko, powerful, definitely, but Shuhei's uh, Zanpak token heal him from that. Bankai, now Bankai is interesting. Uh, Suzumushi, uh, uh, Tutsuzi, and Makarogi. Anyway, uh, cutting off the senses and maybe trying to take out Shuhei there, but again, he'll be able to heal from that. And when he realizes that he's lost his senses, he will activate Bankai, binding him to his opponent, and eventually. Both Bankai's run out, but again, uh, uh, which one runs out first? It, I think it's just a matter. Uh, eventually, Shuhei will probably be able to figure out where Tozen is because Tozen's probably going to try to run him through, and then he's just going to grab him. It's like I found you, Captain Tozen, and then you know, slice and then deactivates his Bankai quick and just slices him down. So there you go. Um, so yeah, I actually have to say I think he beats Tozen in a fight. Unfortunately, when it comes to everyone else, minus Ikaku, he did not fare well. Because against Toshiro, if we're talking about a drawn-out fight, especially if he goes into Bankai, he's done. I mean, I don't think he can take on Toshiro just because of the sheer diversity. Sheer... Oh, God. <laughs> think of the word here. The sheer level of diversity that... Uh, he, uh, Hironi Maru brings to the table just because of being an elemental type Zonpakdo, an ice type. And if he all those pedals go, he turns into his adult form and can basically freeze something and stop all its energy and molecular processes down to the final bit uh, in his that adult form. So that means even his he's one of the individuals who could shut down the Bankai as a whole. So right from there, no way he could beat Toshiro. Against Kenpachi. Now you'd think, because like, oh, he's just going to outlast Kenpachi. Remember, <laughs> he might be able to heal from just about anything as long as he got the Riatsu. And his Bankai, Fuji no Kojo, may combine Riatsu together. But Kenbachi clearly is a beast when it comes to Riatsu. He clearly has the most Riatsu in the Soul Society at this point. Bar and Aizen. Uh, but uh, more importantly, it's about pain. And if you're talking about someone who can take more pain than Shuhei, Kenpachi would be on the top of the list. This man lives for fighting. He can take whatever is dished to or out, dished out towards him, and he will. He's completely going to overwhelm any sort of defense in Bankai. He's trying to uh, that uh, Shuhei is trying to mount to avoid the amount of pain Kenpachi would put him through. So yeah, he completely uh, Kenpachi completely owns them. Uh, Urahara is a very interesting case because Shigai to Shigai, Urahara is much more capable just because he's much more, uh, has much more, uh, options in his Shikai with Benahine. Benahine is one of my favorite Zanpak Del. And yeah, sure, Kazushine can heal him, but it doesn't really matter if he gets blown up by, um, the, the bomb, I can't remember the actual technique's name, the net that turns into a bomb, and a massive one of that. And then, bon and then don't forget that Urahara is a master swordsman as well, so he can keep up with Shuhei sword-wise. He's a master Akito, far beyond Shuhei from what we can tell. We know he can use level 99, uh, the highest level Akito, so, which means he completely beats him in that regard, regard. And then you have his Bankai, which can restructure things, probably even restructuring the Bankai and getting him away out of the Bankai. So right there, uh, he can't really stand up against someone like Urahara, so I have to get the win there to Urahara. Against Mayuri Kuritsuchi! Um, that one is a bit tricky. Because Mayuri, he'll heal from the wound Mayuri gets him, but his Zanpakuto paralyzes individuals. Um, so I don't know if Shuhei is going to have a... I don't know if Shuei is going to be able to counter the poison. I don't think he would. And because of that, all he's got to do is get an actual cut in, and, Shu and Mayori wins. But even Bankai to Bankai, the poison isn't something that you can just heal from. So he, he can probably just trample on Shuhei and just poison him and eventually just wait him out. So, yeah, and this is and we're talking about the base um, Konjiki Agisoku Jigzo, not the, uh, not, the, not the, you know, modified one he used against Pranida. That seems to be the standard version of what it looks like. So, yeah, in that regard also, I don't think he wins. 
Uh, last, but certainly not least, we have captain of the 13th division, Rukia Kuchki. And her Zanpakuto being allowing her to allowing her to um, drop her body's temperature down to absolute zero. And then her Bankai being a flash freeze effect on the same a level. Uh, basically just completely incinner incinerating. Flash freezing and destroying anything that was nearby. Like when she used it against Azna, he completely was frozen to his core and just done. I think that would be the same problem that you would see with someone like Hitsugaya, where he's not going to be able to deal with the fact that she can just freeze the Bonkai, like just shut it down and freeze him into nothing. So, unfortunately, she wins that fight as well. So, she only, again, was tied with Tozen. The only reason he ranked higher than Tozen was because he beat Tozen. So, yeah, that was the one of those few, uh, few um, counters to the whole, well, they beat this guy and this guy. Yeah. If they had the same number of wins, but they beat one of the, like the previous guy, then or one of the, like beat one of the guys who was, uh, had the same amount of wins, then they ranked higher because they beat that guy. Uh, so that ultimately is Shuhei Hisage, the 14th strongest captain class Shinigami. I've really got to learn to shorten these videos. <laughs> anyway, but then again, the cat was also distracting me too. Uh, but until then, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. Ideas for who would win, Star Wars, Severe Magic, What If, anything you can do in the channel, put that in the comments below. Let me know. I'll get to that at some point. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.